welcome back to another episode of the Stat Connect. It's a good week. Utah having one of their best games at home, probably in the history of the program, at least in the history of the Pac-12. Um, one of the biggest blowouts that we've that we've seen at 55 to three, just complete smackdown of Arizona State. And uh, now they get rewarded with getting to go to the number five co- the team in the country, Washington. And so it's, we've got a great episode today where we'll get to talk a little bit about what, what went so well for Utah against Arizona State, and then uh, do they have a chance? They're uh, looking like 10-point underdogs, uh, back and forth kind of going around that number. Can they win? Do they have a chance against Washington? So, uh, again, I'm Matt Patton. we got Dustin Birch and Joe Silverweed with us today. So let's start, let's start with you, Joe. What do you think about that game? What happened? Against ASU, I mean, everything, yeah, yeah, everything I mean, how- went good. You know, they, they, they just kind of figured out what uh, what to do. I, I think that we, honestly, quite a bit of of uh, sort of not exactly luck, but but uh, you know, some some so- solid opportunities, taking advantage of those opportunities. Uh, really saw to to my mind Vele, who I think has has been evolving as a as a receiver, just continue to separate himself and, and prove that he's a very very difficult to cover guy. Um, all started with the you know with a, a pretty secure pocket for for Bards. Uh, Bards running the ball uh, just created that kind of space that they needed, but. More than anything else, what I what I think uh, this this Utah offense thrives on or or finds opportunities with is getting out ahead early. Uh, yeah. Bards settles in, the the offense gets to open up the playbook a little bit. Uh, when Utah is up seven or fourteen or or more points, it it becomes a much much easier proposition. Um, I think they tend to panic a little bit and run the uh, sort of duck away for the run a little bit too fast. I think Barnes tends to to you know play a little bit too much hero ball, a little bit too soon sometimes. Um, and then at the end of the game, you know, once once the Utes had it in hand, it was just one huge play after another, kind of blow yeah. blowing the just game open. Uh, Jaquinta Jackson's long run, Nate Johnson's long run, Charlie Vincent. I mean, you know, I was <laughs> I was uh, a guy guy named after mustard. Like I didn't even know we had a flavor of mustard on the team, and here he is. That sounds like Dijon. Are you talking about Dijon? <laughs> yeah, that's no, same. that's the guy. That's the thing. <laughs> but now I want a hot dog. Um, <laughs> but you know, just uh, it was just everything went right. Uh, Arizona State was, uh, you know, their flaws wildly exposed by by a Utah team. Exactly what they were doing. Um, well, they've had to face injuries I, like Utah has. I think the Utah. No, were... no one has had to face injuries like Utah has. <laughs> That's true. At least they're at least they were under their fourth string when quarterback. Arizona no State one's close. Third string quarterback goes down. I I I said to myself, you know, I feel a lot of sympathy for yes. this football team right now. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is, the youth were really pissed. I think they they were frustrated with themselves and and. Um, knew that their performance against Oregon was well short of what they were capable of, certainly, and uh, and, and just came out, you know, on fire and and, uh, didn't look back. That's great. You know, I I have to say one thing that really surprised me, though, was the the pocket that you were talking about, the protection that was given to Barnes. I, I mean... Arizona State's got a couple really good rushers, and uh, I think Prince Dorba went out with an injury at one point. Um, yes, yeah, six but not until on the year. Yeah, not until almost the mm-hmm. midpoint. I mean, in yeah, Barnes was clean the whole game. There was one sack kind of midway through, but for the most part, completely clean. And they were averaging almost three a game, so they're they're a better. That that was what surprised me about the game. You know, I I had said that I wouldn't be surprised at all by a shutout, and honestly, the the defense pitched a shutout. Yeah. That the the three points that they gave up were after a eighty yard kickoff return. Yeah. That's a shutout. They gave up eighty two yards. That's a shutout uh, for that defense. But I was surprised by how good Utah's offense looked against a solid, not great. This isn't an Oregon or an Oregon State or a UCLA level defense, 
But Arizona State statistically is a solid defense. So and they've played a lot of really tough offenses. And so I expected them to be prepared and, and to us to kind of have to grind out a UCLA type game that, you know, Utah should have been better than ASU, but I was not expecting them to be 40 plus points better by any stretch. So is ASU's defense better than Washington's? Yeah. Oh, statistically, yeah. Oh, statistically yeah. <laughs> it's not even close. Yeah. The, statistically, the, the Husky, ASU's mid forties and Washington's in the hundreds in most categories. The, the Huskies, the Huskies are a uniquely terrible um, defense. I, 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 I think something that is similar about them though, is that, Utah is a is sort of a station by station offense when the offense is working right. Even even at the best of times, and in this case, the reason the score got so lopsided is because they were able to break a bunch of of long runs. But in general, Utah's gonna you know they're gonna get four yards on first down and then five yards on second down and convert that turn short. And that's sort of the way that that team uh, works their way down the field, and that works against. A, a mediocre or too bad defense where I think Utah is limited is when they're playing a really bad defense, they don't have the ability to sort of expose that bad defense and, and open them up in the way that, uh, you know, USC, terrible, terrible defense. Utah won that game, but it was, but even, even when they were winning that game, it was a workman like, sort of effort working their way down the field to create those opportunities rather than, uh, you know, blowing the top off. Joe, you, you used the phrase uniquely terrible defense, and I wish that were true. The Pac-12 <laughs> so is, full, is full of equally <laughs> uniquely terrible defenses. Cal is as bad. USC is as bad. Colorado is worse. Yes, ESPN has these efficiencies, and I was looking at offense. I was an opponent-adjusted metric. The Pac-12 has the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth best offenses uh, of all of college football. And now I've got to look and see what the uh, what the defenses are because I can virtually guarantee you that they've also got the you know third, fourth, fifth, sixth, <laughs> and seventh worst defenses. It's a it's a terribly predictable, but it's um, it. The, but I, I was going to say. Yeah, I was going to say that this feels like an early 2000s Pac-10, right? Everybody plays offense and nobody plays defense, except that Oregon State, UCLA, and Utah play really, really, really good defense. Those are three top 20 defenses. And so it's an interesting world where there are three teams that are playing really, really good defense and not very good offense. There are five or six teams that are playing great offense and no defense whatsoever. And then there's Oregon. Yeah. which is doing good on both sides yep. of the ball. Yep. And 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 they should be ranked behind Washington. Games have to matter, but they're better. They're a better team. Yeah. You know, I, I, another thing that I'm wondering with Washington coming up then is if Washington defense is really bad, will Utah be able to get anywhere near 50? I mean, obviously not 55 points, but – Will they be able to score enough points to outscore an offense that is as good as Washington? I think the only way that Utah wins this game is by turning the ball over, is, is, by, is by disrupting Washington drives. U Utah is a station-to-station -station offense, down-to-down, -down, which means – it, it, it feels good when when a team is doing that and they're they're getting those yardages on first and second down but it only takes one incompletion and then suddenly instead of third and two it's third and eight and you've got nobody who can who can complete that pass and make that happen and the defense pins their pins their ears back and, and the whole the whole system is kind of falls apart pretty quickly when you don't have the ability to sort of correct for those kinds of natural mistakes. And a defense can mostly against an offense like Utah, just sit back. So yeah, you can have these 10 yards. You can have these 10 yards. We'll, we'll wait till somebody drops the ball and, and uh, then you'll punt or you'll, you'll have to kick a field goal. And then on the other side of the ball, you've got a Washington offense that it's, it's third and 45 and they're still, they're still going to go for six, right? They're, they're still going to do everything they can to convert that because they can. And, and Utah just doesn't have an answer for that unless, yeah, sort of wonder of wonders here. Um, 
they they get a bunch of turnovers. Now, I, I I think lately they the Washington has has had more turnovers, but yeah. overall they're a three to one TD to INT ratio. Um, great, just a great great quarterback does not make a ton of mistakes. Uh, and Utah has lost some really critical playmakers, especially in that turnover department. This is this is a game where if if Lander Martin is in that defensive backfield, you could you could uh, really easily imagine him taking over that game, surprising people, um, pick six, those kinds of things happening. Uh, but it gets harder and harder as as Utah has been been thinner and and doesn't have a playmaker in the second. Great secondary, a lot of great athletes in that backfield, but not a playmaker like they've had in years past with with uh Clark Phillips and, and that that sort of pedigree and legacy isn't, isn't really in that backfield right now well and there's been a, a few stats though that does surprise me about Washington that makes me think maybe Utah has a chance and, and a couple of those are what you've mentioned turnover margin I was shocked to see that they were negative three in turnover margin which is 90th in the country and I think a big part of that is even though Penix has only thrown I think seven interceptions they just don't get turnovers either i think that they've only got one forced fumble which they just got last week against caleb williams on a sack and the other thing was penalties they are second to last in the country in penalty yards and so those are the types of things where you shoot yourself in the foot and when you're playing a good defense like utah uh that might be what costs you the game so are you seeing similar numbers dustin you're kind of our numbers guy with pff what do you see there yeah i mean so it's interesting right i always try to look at uh, you know, I don't have a, a like a, a statistical model model built up that I that I have all of this stuff feeds into. I try to look at each game individually and who would who would do that? Who would build a whole model nonsense to, to this game? That seems like a lot more work than it's worth. <laughs> Unlike so we've had a couple of games this year that we've talked about the where I've gone, all right, this team has played complete garbage. USC was like that. Garbage, 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 garbage. You couldn't take much from the stats against USC. And the fact that they were so bad on defense against some of the worst offenses in the country made me think, okay, that offense is not as good as it sounds. And that defense probably is getting more credit than it deserves. And and the fact that the defense is in the sub 100s against horrible offenses makes me think, okay, Utah's actually gonna be able to play in this game. Oregon similarly had played some really terrible teams, but their their rankings were good. So they yeah, did what needed to be done good. against really terrible teams. Washington's played both. Washington has played, you know, they played Oregon, who is solid on both sides of the ball. They played some good offenses. Boise's offense is good. Uh, Cal's offense is good. Obviously, USC's offense is good. And they played some okay defenses. Michigan State's defense is decent. Arizona's got a, a solid defense. Uh, and, and then Oregon, again, on both sides of the ball. And so they've played some on both sides, but they have played, I will say, absolutely trash pass defenses. Hmm. Now, some of that is facing the best pass offense by 50 yards a game, right? Washington is 50 yards a game ahead of number two, Washington state there. So they're the, there's a reason that everyone's numbers are smashed here a little bit, but Boise's 123rd, Tulsa's 127th, Cal's 124th, even wow. Arizona, who's kind of in the solid range is in the seventies, uh, ASU 62nd, Stanford's 130th, USC's 105th. Wait, so Stanford's last? Stanford's dead last wow. in pass defense. And so, there is an opportunity there for Utah's pass defense to, to push Washington into an area where they're uncomfortable because Utah's in the, in the 30s. Utah's the best, statistically, the best pass defense that Washington's going to see. Even Oregon is 38th. Even Oregon is slightly behind Utah. And Oregon got to play Utah, and Utah had to play Oregon. So there there's some room there, but... I, I don't – I've I've gone back and forth about this game this week because could go exactly like USC, could go, you know, in, in that kind of range where Utah comes out, jumps all over them, keeps, keeps up with them, and, and gets the win on the road. But it's not going to go like ASU. 
But what's your so what's your what's your pick then, Dustin? You you got to we're nailing you down. Yeah, you got yeah. I, I I think it's a, a a a higher scoring game. I think Utah covers. You know, a ten point line. I think Utah's better than that. Utah's playing pretty well. I think Utah gets a turnover, but I don't think it's. I I think they'll need two to win it. So I think it's probably twenty eight to 21, 28, 23, something like that. Uh, see, and I've gone back and forth too. Here's what finally got me to go, and, and I'm going to go with Utah here. And the reason why, I know I know everyone's Your sweet shocked. sweet summer child. <laughs> everyone's shocked that I'm going to go with Utah. But the reason why, it comes from, I, I put this out on Twitter, but the UW Huskies reporter for the Seattle Times, um, he, he mentioned that he put in an article before the USC game. He said, the Huskies have been leaking gas. Despite being 8-0 and ranked fifth in the nation, they've been outgained in each of their last three games. They suffered upset scares. We're talking to Stanford and Arizona State. Um, he, he, he was just talking about how they're starting to show some of those chinks in the armor. And as I looked at that, I just thought, yeah, I mean, they, they were only beating Stanford, I think, 35-33 with about five minutes left in the game. Stanford. I mean, Stanford's done a little better, but this is Stanford we're talking about. They had trouble with Arizona State to the point where, where the you know, if Arizona State gets a touchdown rather than throwing a pick six deep in their red zone, uh, you might be talking about Washington somehow losing to Arizona State. And so, there was a lot of a, a lot of uh, sort of questionable Pac-12 refing in that game in yeah, favor of Washington. True. That's true. Which you you mentioned earlier that uh, they're the most penalized team in the country. I suspect, you know, uh, I, I'm not a, a ref conspiracy guy, but if a call is going to be close, the Pac-12 is going to want Washington more on to win this game than Utah. So that's true. Uh, but Utah is one of the least penalized teams, and uh, they have one of the best turnover margins. So they've got a lot of good yep. things going for them. So yeah, I'm going Utah 31-28. I think that uh, I think against this defense, Utah can get it done, and uh, and then I think they can they can find a way to make them one dimensional. And, and that's what it'll take to win. Joe rain on our parade. Yeah. Let's I'm see your graph. Like, Let's hear your numbers. You let, you, you let me be the bad guy. And I so like being the bad guy sometimes. <laughs> well, um, you're wearing black. So that's, you know, the villain, right? And oh, blue. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so what Utah does badly on defense. And really, it's the only thing is pass plays over the top. You think back to that Arda game or the USC game or some of these these other games, and there is a there is a a weakness to especially a mid mid distance pass play that then breaks open. Right, that's that's sort of the thing that a Utah fan is constantly rubbing their temples about on defense third and 14 and they and, and it gets converted right it's that that kind of frustrating moment well guess who has passed for more pass plays of more than 30 yards of any team in the country by like six that would be the washington huskies if they you, are if you say hey, who do you really, think's leading in this passing stat you should pick washington it doesn't matter what the stat every is. Time. they are really really good at that Utah's bad at it. Washington doesn't run the ball, right? So whereas other offenses are going to say, "Hey, we're going to start with a run. We're we're going to show them who's who's more physical. We're going to we're going to make them pull in their safeties, and then we're going to beat them over the top." Washington's like, "Drop a ball back. I don't care. <laughs> Cover ten. Tampa six. It doesn't matter. We're still going to score touchdowns back there, and they do." And Utah can't cover can't cover an offense like that. I, I think Washington is going to have an absolute field day uh, with with Utah's defense. I think they are going to score a lot of points uh, with ease. Um, and for all of Washington's weaknesses, like I like I said, all they have to do is kind of sit back, to, you know, two yards past the the line to gain and say it's going to take you three plays to get there. You're going to make a couple mistakes. We're just going to wait it out, and then we're going to score in three seconds. Um, and, and so I, I just, I can't see unless there's a, there's a big turnover party. I just can't see Utah winning this game. 
uh, on, on the road. And honestly, so my 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 chart, uh, my my numbers, right? We we've got Utah right around that that nine and a half nine line is really really good for my for my statistical uh, standpoint, right? That that night I wouldn't bet on this line. Uh, la- last week, right? I said you know like, let's let's take Utah to cover that line. Um, this week, this is a good line. There's not a lot of value in this line from a statistical standpoint. But when I look at the teams and I think about what I know about the Utes and I think about what I know about Washington, I don't think Utah's going to cover this line. I think Washington is going to is going to run away with this game. Um, I am I'm expecting ugly. I'm expecting a lot of Utah fans to turn this game off in the in the fourth quarter. Um, or maybe you turn it off in the second quarter and then you turn it back on in the third quarter. You're like, oh, maybe they maybe they're gonna come back and then it doesn't it doesn't happen. So I'm I'm gonna go ahead and and uh, and I'm gonna give a, a gentleman's blowout and do Washington 38, Utah 27. Um, I I have very low confidence in in the Utes this week. Uh, I think this is the this is a, this is a doom week for sure. You know, I would have I would have agreed with you earlier in the season, but I just Washington over the last five games has only had a a, a point differential of seven point two. Been close games, and they're not playing great teams other than Oregon. But if you just read the numbers, Arizona State they scored fifteen. There was the week after Oregon, right? Yeah. Total total. Uh, what do you call it? Overlooked game. Total, total trap game. Uh, yeah. Oh. See, this is what happens if it's, you if you go against you, the Utes. Not just <laughs> against the Utes, but uh, picked Utah, not even to cover. Yeah, not even to cover. He just gets taken off the show altogether. He's thrown out. <laughs> well, it's just me and you now, oh, Matt. I, I'm back. There, I'm back. there he is. Oh, jeez. Uh, all right, I'm going to start. I, I just touched the wrong button here. I was moving my... <laughs> no problem. And I took that. Um. <clears throat> So let's I like if you look at these numbers, right? I'm just gonna read some numbers to you. Arizona State, they scored 15. It was a trap game the week after Oregon. But now I'm gonna read some other numbers to you. 56, 43, 41, 59, 31, 36, 42, 52. That's how many points the Washington Huskies have scored week to week. Utah can't score that many points. This football team cannot score 52 points without without just without just the complete folding like a like a cheap paper bag that we like saw Arizona last State. Week. But Washington's not gonna do that. They're gonna come back and they're gonna go score and they're gonna keep the ball and they're gonna do all the things they have to do. And there is just no to, way. There's just no way. To, to be fair to those numbers. Those were scored against the 105th worst pass defense, the 130 worst pass defense, the 62nd worst pass defense, the 71st worst pass defense. Other than the 36 against Oregon, it's garbage. And Cal, who they beat, yes, 59-32, Cal's 124th. Those are terrible pass defenses. But you... All you can do against a terrible pass defense is score sixty points, and that's and that's a lot. Right. But but yes, Utah g- gives up more than the rest of the defense when it comes to long passing plays. But they're not one hundred and twentieth in long passing plays. They're well, middle yes, of I the road. Pick, I'm not picking Washington fifty five. Utah Utah <laughs> six. Right? Like that's, no, no. that's that's not the that's not the the score here. But I think Washington is going to score more than Utah can score on in a road game. Uh, that that means everything to this Huskies team. That we're all seeing the leaks. I could see the leaks too. But I tell you, who is not looking in the mirror and saying, "Man, we might not be a very good team." <laughs> Those players, right? They're they're like undefeated. Beat Oregon. Gonna go beat Alabama. Gonna go beat Texas. Whoever will beat them all. Ooh, uh, they, I they hope are, that. They are flying. I hope that's how the locker room is feeling. I hope that's how the locker room is feeling. Because that's how you that's how you almost lose 15 to 7 to ASU. Yeah, Yeah, I don't don't think they're gonna be overlooking Utah. All right. But I I I think uh, I think it's gonna be a good game. I don't think it's gonna be a a total embarrassment, but uh but uh, but uh, I'm I hope you guys are I hope you guys are right. 
because I'm, I, a little, I picked, I'm a little tired of being Mr. Goldenberg. <laughs> I picked against uh, Utah uh, in the USC game as well. I think this is going to feel a lot like the USC game, but yeah. Washington's a little bit better. They're a little bit better at everything, and they're flying high. So I think it's I think it's hard for Utah. Maybe we get another pig farmer special, you know, last <laughs> second, last second drive. Utah, however, you know, I we talked about this after the USC game. There are six of those, five or six of those last second fourth quarter drives against USC. There are none of them in the history against Washington. Yeah, Utah just doesn't have that same history against Washington. No, they, they really don't. And I, I look at this as worst case scenario. You might have like a Rose Bowl against Ohio State where they just throw and throw and throw and Utah can't do anything to stop them. But I just feel like that they've made enough adjustments to those defensive backs uh, even playing around a little bit with Tao Johnson now, maybe going a little to the cornerback. Smith Snowden starting to show he could be, uh, you know, if so, if they need to mix it up a little bit. And Utah's got some size there with Miles Battle that might be able to keep up with some of these bigger receivers that Utah's had a, had a problem with. So I kind of see that as worst case scenario there, best case scenario where where you know where those guys that I just mentioned can actually get it done and uh, and kind of contain that 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 offense. Obviously. When it's the number one passing offense in the country, for the most part, in most most categories, they're going to score. But it's just can they contain it so that it's not too much? So we'll find out. We will find out. Looking forward to it, gentlemen, and talk to you next week. Okay, sounds good. See you guys next week.